Okay, everyone, so for today, we are going to get back into WordPress like we were working previously. Um, and if you recall, on the very first day, we started from the beginning and we created a project. And then uh, we started it again last time, two weeks ago. And then I said, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the site back to life eventually. Uh, and uh, that's, what our, that's what's in store for us today. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and open the uh, computer window. Let's go ahead and open computer window. And uh, let's go to the classroom data folder. Let's open the classroom data folder, drive Z right there. And we'll go to our class, which is campus. Uh, WordPress 1. I've got a copy of the work we ended up with last time. I've got a copy here with the, with the date of two weeks ago. And if you have your copy of it, of your work from last time, we can use it or we can use mine. It's up to you to decide which one you would like. Mine uh, from that folder I would recommend because that's where I ended up with uh, that's where you know my settings were at and all of that but if you want to use your own project that's perfectly fine what you need to do if you're using your own project most likely you're going to open your flash drive and, and you should have saved this is the the problem that people always have at the beginning here when we created this archive last time it gave us two things the zip file with this huge name and installer.php. Both of these files should be in a folder. So if yours is not like that, I highly recommend <coughs> use mine and we'll figure yours out later. But mine is complete. Mine is a folder that has both of the required files. If you're missing one or the other, you're going to be stuck. You're going to fall behind. I recommend you follow along with mine. So you're going, to, uh, you're going to use this folder. How? Well, let's see the instruction number four. If you didn't get a chance to print previously, we'll be able to print a little later. But I, I need to open up my instruction number four right here just to, just to uh, give us an overview about what we need to do. And then we'll do it together. Remember, please mute your devices if you haven't done so yet, please. We've got one, two, three, four. So we're going to open Instruction number four, and instruction number four is set up into two, uh, two, two sections. We've got the archive your site section, which we did at the end of the day last time, and we'll do it again today because we're going to proceed more, and we need to then uh, back that up so that we can use it next time. And then we've got resurrect your site, which is what we'll do right now. This is to bring the site back to life. Now, did any of you try to do this at home during the last class meeting? A couple people, how did it work out? It worked out really well, okay, good. Uh, if you haven't tried to do any of this at home, you should, because it's, it's all free. Uh, WAMP server and duplicator plugin, all of this stuff is free, you should try it. Uh, therefore, you'll be more versed when you want to do it for real. And remember, in this class, we're doing all of this as like a testing environment, and eventually we'll put it out live. We'll get to that point. But the big overview here about how to bring the site back to life is uh, we do need to create another uh, database. We'll do that in just a moment. Then we're going to use the files in that folder to bring the site back to life, so we need to reconnect our project with the database, and then the site is back to life. So we'll do that together right now, but where did the pink sheet end up? The pink sheet right there, could you pass it uh, to the next person, please? So what we need to do is we need to get, uh, we need to get up and running again, and so that is, uh, we need to launch WAMP server from the desktop, double click the purple or magenta icon right there, double click that, WAMP server should then appear on the bottom right corner, a little W, 
little green W should appear eventually. It may start off red and then it goes to green eventually. So eventually I get the green I get the green W down there in the corner. Click on the green W and then uh, near the top select PHP my admin. That's what the instruction is saying. Go to PHP my admin so that we can make a database. We are not going to start from scratch. I know we started from scratch when we last times we made a database, but we need to create like a temporary placeholder database and then we can bring the site back to life and we're up and running. So we say start all services and click on that. And nope, you just click PHP my admin. So then we will uh, open up that will open up the web browser. And so my instructions here are basically saying log into PHP my admin, which is what we did right now. I'm going to create a database again. I recommend here we'll call it WordPress, but we can call it anything we want. So we did this a couple of times together previously. When we're inside of PHP my admin, we have to click on databases tab at the top. It asks for a name of the database. We can call it anything. It can be called Kitty Cat, and this will work. We're going to call it WordPress and click Create button. We've done it a couple of times. We'll keep doing this procedure several times. Eventually, though, you're going to need to do it yourself. We've done it together three times, creating a database. You're going to need to do it yourself eventually. But did everyone uh, manage to create the database here? We can confirm this because it says WordPress right there. This is a list of our databases. And down here, too, is another list. So we've got the WordPress database. I'm going to minimize this window for the moment. So my instructions. Log into PHP my admin, create a database, check. Copy your archived site into your www folder. Okay, what that is saying is from my network folder, this is our archived site. This whole folder is our archived site. If you've got a copy on your flash drive, we can use it. But I'm going to recommend let's use mine. And what that's saying is you're going to need to copy that whole folder. So if you right click, copy it not what's inside, the whole folder. Right-click the 2016 4.11 folder and select Copy. And I'm going to open another window because now it says put this into your WW folder. The WW folder is inside of computer. It's inside of local disk, the C drive. Open local disk. Then you'll see the uh, WAMP folder, right? It's alphabetical. Open up WAMP on the C drive. Open WAMP, and then you'll see WW folder. Open the WWW folder, and once you're in this screen on an on an empty spot of the window, right click and paste. You're getting a copy of my work from two weeks ago into your WAMP folder. So we can copy that over. It might take a second because it's a, it's coming off of the network. Did I everyone lost, get that? I lost place for a second. So we're copying that 2016-04-11 into WAMP, right? Is that what into the WAMP folder in WAMP. Okay. I got lost because I thought Yeah. 
Right, so as my instructions say, we need to copy that whole folder into the WW folder. And what I mean by that, what's so important is that inside that 2016-411 folder, we have the zip file, which includes every picture of your site, every price of your product, every user, everything. And then the installer file are instructions to bring it back to life. So if you don't have both of those, you're not going to be able to proceed. I copied into my WW folder, back to the instructions. Uh, okay, copy your archive site, check. In your web browser, access the installer file. Now, let's think one step outside the box. This is saying, go to your web browser and go to this address. But this is not the exact address you need to go to. Why? The date. I printed this April 1st, and therefore this has 0401. But my folder that I just gave you is 11. So make a note of that, that don't literally type that or it won't work. You have to think what you just did. You copied the folder 2016 4.11. Next week, when we start the next class, we're going to have a new folder called 4.25. Because every time we're going to make a new folder. So what this is saying is open your web browser and let's go to the address http colon slash slash localhost slash 2016 dash 04 dash 11 slash installer dot php obviously I can't update my instructions every week to tell you the right date but you can figure it out it's the date of the folder that you just got from my network folder so go ahead and type that in press enter and if it worked you will see the duplicator installer window. Let's pause here. If you don't see it, something went wrong. Did something go wrong for anyone? Something went wrong. Not found. I mean, something went wrong. So it's too good to go
so uh, the WordPress duplicator screen is upon us. Uh, looks complicated, but I've got instructions here, of course. So it says, uh, you'll be asked to fill in the server path, etc. The default server is localhost. I, I should change that, actually. There should be a lowercase. I don't believe it matters, but sorry, that should be a lowercase localhost. But it's already filled in. Host is, what's the web server you're setting this up on? Localhost. That's obvious right there, localhost. Then we've got name, new or existing database name. Well, we just created a database called WordPress. Earlier today, we created a database called WordPress. User and password, according to my notes, uh, right here, default login of the user is root. Default password is blank, is empty, is nothing. We saw this we saw a, a variation of this when we installed WordPress for the first time. Here we're bringing WordPress back to life. We didn't lose anything last time, from last time. But we need to connect this back to a database, WordPress, with a user of root and a password of empty, nothing. To make sure this is correct, click this test connection button and it should pop up here success success if one of these is not success that is most likely you didn't call you might have called your database WordPress with a capital W and here it's lowercase or you might be putting in the wrong user or the wrong password you might have typed blank as the password but it's not literally blank it's blank so did everyone get success on that okay um, what this is about, this is we're looking at that installer.php file in the folder. We're looking at installer.php. And what it's about to do is unzip this folder, I mean this file, and do a bunch of things for us. This is a really nice screen because it'll bring our site back to life really easily. Uh, this is the duplicator plugin, one of the last things we looked at two weeks ago. Makes a perfect copy of your site, brings your site back to life. Just think about how great this is. What if you need to move your website off of GoDaddy to put it onto Bluehost? Or what if you need to take it off of Bluehost to go put it on, uh, on Yahoo? This is what you would use. We would use this duplicator process. We're going to make a backup at the end of the day again to remind us. And then when we come back next week, we're going to bring it back to life again. So that's how we can bring the site back to life and take it with us and not lose our work. And this is what we can use to move our site from server to server. If you take it one step further, this is how you can take your live site. What if I've got victorsbakery.com, but I don't want to mess it up? I can make a duplicator backup of it from my .com and bring it down to my WAMP server, which will not affect my live site. WAMP server, localhost, is completely independent. So I can make a duplicator backup, bring it back to life on WAMP server, and work on it and break it and mess it up. No problem. Start over. But my live site is still up there, unaffected. So this is a procedure that we do for real clients. We don't want to mess with their existing one. We make a copy of it, work on WAMP server locally. Once it's ready, then upload it. Make a perfect backup before we go in and start to make all the changes. And yes, there are other plugins that will do this perhaps a little bit more user-friendly. Uh, this is not the only one. This is not the best one. This is my favorite one, and this is the one I've got most experience in. But if you find another one that works easier, and perhaps affordably, let us know, and we might talk about it in class. But anyway, duplicator is ready to go, so it's going to give you a big scary warning down here. This is saying, you're about to resurrect a site, and if you are connecting to an existing database, it's going to delete everything there. So this could be very damaging if you're accidentally bringing your site back to life on top of another site. You'll lose that whole site completely, and it'll be replaced with this site. That's okay for us because, you know, this is a testing environment, a testing site, but if this is on your real.com, you have to be very careful about this warning. I just had this sort of, you know, I've been doing this for years, but even I still have that crisis. Am I, am I doing it right? A few days ago when I was, you know, bringing back to life a client site, and I'm like, okay, I gotta triple check all of this because it could mess things up. And everything worked out okay. So after reading the warnings and me explaining it to you, click on, I have read all the warnings. 
and click Run Deployment. And it's going to warn you one more time. Warning, be sure these databases parameters are correct. They are, probably, so click OK. Now it's going to process it. It's going to unzip the folder, put everything in the right place, tap into the database, write everything there, connect the two, bring the site back exactly as we left it two weeks ago. Depending on the complexity of your site, the size of your site, this may happen quickly or it may take several minutes. It might take longer, usually it takes longer off of, from off of a real server. Uh, but usually leave it about running a minute or two, sometimes it might take five minutes, rarely it takes more than that. If you've got a really big site, it takes longer. Eventually we get to step two. You see there's step one, step two, step three. Follow the on-screen instructions to begin resurrecting your archived site. After it succeeds, it will recommend a few steps. Okay, so here it's saying, here's the old settings, here are the new settings. If I was moving this off of GoDaddy to Bluehost, it would say the old server and my new server. Here's just saying, well, it's the same thing, basically. It's on the same testing server. Um, And uh, in this screen, if we wanted to, we can create a new admin account. This is useful. Sometimes people tell me, I had this old web developer who, you know, I, I can't work with them anymore. I need to move away from the site. I, I still, I'm, I'm logged into the site, but I don't know what the password is. I can't ask them anymore. What can I do? Well, you can make a duplicator backup of the site, move it over, and on this screen here, create a brand new admin account to take out the other person. For us, none of this is necessary, so we'll just click Run Update. Final steps, we're on test uh, step three. If you got any errors or warnings, they will show up here. Everything seems to be green. Did anyone get any warnings or errors? Any red here? Usually this doesn't happen too often. But if there are errors, you can click there and it will try to explain it. And I've been using this plugin for years and it works really well. And when anything messes up, it is useful to read the report to help you fix it. But warnings, most likely you can move on and live with. Errors, you definitely want to fix. And I don't see any errors or warnings, so I think we're good. The next steps are sort of like cleaning things up. Step two here, save permalinks. <coughs> what this is about is you, in theory, moved from one server to another. The links uh, need to be updated to confirm that you're on the right server now. So we'll do that one in a moment. Then number three is, in theory, you should check your site that there aren't any broken links. You should follow the home page link, go to the about, go to whatever. You should follow your links. That could take a while, and usually this plugin does a really good job of making a copy, so I don't really do the test site. It, it, it's worked like 99% of the time, but as a beginner, perhaps, just to allay your fears, you might want to test your site, and that's simply click this link, click that link, click this link, just check everything's there. What are the links to click? Whether well, they links on your site, we're not there yet. I'm just giving you an overview, but it's all of the links of your site completely. And then we'll do the fourth step in a moment, which is to clean up the installer files. Uh, that installer.php file and that zip file are still hanging around on your site. They're still taking up space and resources. And in theory, a person could follow the installer steps again and roll your site back. Let's say you work on your site for a month, and for whatever reason, someone else on the team decides to click on that installer PHP file again. It'll go through the process of bringing the site back to life from a month ago, after all that work you've done. So in a moment, we'll do the security cleanup so that we don't have that old copy hanging around on the server. I've still got that backup on a flash drive, that's safe, but I don't want to leave those backup files there, those resurrection files there on the server if they're not necessary. So when you say you have it 
Well, that's simply that this folder here, the 2016 411, that's a that's that, that's the backup. And I've got it on a flash drive or I've got it on a, you know, a little portable hard drive or somewhere. I've got a backup of it maybe on Dropbox, <coughs> which is backup somewhere, but I don't need a copy of it anymore on the server. So what my instructions here are saying, after it succeeds, it will recommend a few steps. Follow them, especially removing the archives. So step one is done. We don't have any errors. Let's click step two, save permalinks. That'll ask you to log into the site. And remember, this is wanting, this is telling you to log back into my site, not the one you ended up with. And my site, the username is admin, and the password is password. I'm going to write it here because I can't show you here, but it's password with a capital P. Username is admin, and password is password with a capital C. Click login. That should take you back to the permalinks settings screen. All you need to do here is just click Save. The purpose of this is, again, if I was taking it off of victor.com and moving it over to victorsbakery.net, the link structure has changed. The permalinks, the addresses have changed. Here we just need to tell WordPress again, here's our links, save them. And the new addresses, victorsbakery.net, should then apply. Get everyone sign in and, and save your permalinks. Okay. Notice it opened a different tab. I have a tab of duplicator and a tab of permalinks. I did step two. I'm done with the permalinks tab. Close permalinks. Takes me back to duplicator. Step three then would be that if you don't have to do this, but if I click step three, it would then say, okay, browse your site, click this, click that, follow this link, follow this, that. Again, I'm gonna. This works like 99% of the time. We've got a really small site at the moment. I'm not gonna bother looking at all my links. If you have a more complex site, you might want to. It could take a while. But I'm gonna say we've tested our site. It's there. If it didn't work, we'll we'll fix it. But I'm gonna say we're done with step three. That's okay. I I believe it worked. It usually works. Step four, this is about deleting those backup files. Let's click number four. It's just going to give you a warning you're about to delete these files. Just click OK. That takes you back to the, to the dashboard. It takes you back to the duplicator screen, tools screen, data cleanup screen. So you want to click, uh, you want to click delete reserved files. Those reserved files are the installer PHP file and that zip file. Uh, click on that, delete reserved files. You should then get some green check marks. You remove the installer, the backup, the data, the database, the log, and the other database. Um, and then it's a... What's that? You click on number four in the duplicator screen. So here it said it removed these files, but notice it is recommended to remove your archive file from the root. You will need to do this manually. <clears throat> That's annoying, and an older version of Duplicator would remove it for you. It would delete everything, and now they leave that file, which is weird, because that's, that's half complete. Why did it delete these files, but not the zip file? So I don't know why the author chose to change that in their plugin, but what this is telling us is you need to go back to the 
and, I, and my instructions are saying it here also, uh, return to the WW folder and delete the remaining zip file. So I still have open my www folder. You need to go back to the www folder again inside the 24 uh, the 411 folder. And you should still see the zip file, the one with the huge name. Delete that. You no longer need it because we brought the site back to life. Click it and then press delete on the keyboard and then say yes, delete. Just one moment. So then we've deleted it here. And um, that was our step number four. We brought back we brought the site back to life, and then we are deleting these leftover files. We no longer need them. So those were the four steps in the duplicator screen. I'm finished with the duplicator screen. I'm going to close the duplicator tab. I'm going to stay in the tools tab. I'm finished with duplicator. I've got my site back to life. You can confirm that by hovering over the name of the site, Victor's Bakery, and click Visit Site. And this is the site where we left it up where we left it off. We created a couple of blog posts, I think. Notice the date down there says April 11th. We've got an About Us screen. So in Word Duplicator, we don't do anything. We just click on delete user files and then uh, Remember to raise your hand. Uh, remember to raise your hand since it's easier to ask a question that way. What's the question? Um, after we deleted the file, what do we do next? You close the Duplicator tab. Okay, so so here then, um, the site is back to life, and uh, we're, we're ready to keep going because I don't want to start over again. And right now, it might have felt like, well, you know, we, we did a lot just to set up. Yes, we set ourselves up, but if we had a much more complex site, we're ready to go. We've got all the pages. We've got all the products. If we had products, we've got all of the contact info, everything. It is a little bit of a setup to bring it back to life. That's why I've got this instruction sheet. So we've got log into your newly resurrected site. It's an exact copy of your archive site. Press the new site. Done. So we brought our site back to life from from two weeks ago. This is the exact procedure that I would do to some degree if I was moving it from one server to another. If I was working on my site for these two months and then eventually I want to put it on the real internet, I would do the same thing. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But here's our site brought back to life at this point. Any questions so far? All right, so um, so again, you can print out the handout a little bit later. So I'm looking back on the syllabus just to remind ourselves of the schedule. Okay, uh, what we missed last time, we need to talk about widgets and plugins. Okay, so we've got our site uh, back to life and now we can work with it.